welcome back to the sound for more channel and welcome back to another tutorial and demonstration today i have the pleasure to introduce you to kaleidoscope from four pockets before i continue i would like to remind my viewers to subscribe as it helps with growing the channel additionally if you would like to support what i do please do check the description contained in each video thank you again so kaleidoscope it's a MIDI effect which is based on the principle of a delay but in this case it's not an audio delay it's a MIDI delay so as you can see we have here kaleidoscope as a MIDI processor this is what it looks like and I have connected it to uh, my keyboard controller then what I have here is Pianotech and therefore I have connected Kaleidoscope as well to, uh, like, like you see now, connected to the MIDI output of Kaleidoscope, okay? So in this case, so you don't need it to connect it to the keyboard in this case, okay? So as uh, um, I press a key on my controller, the MIDI event will go to Kaleidoscope, which will pass then the MIDI event uh, accordingly to Pianotech. So you might be thinking, what so special about it? Well, let's wait a second. So first of all, let's go through chromatically uh, the uh, note uh, for an octave. Okay, so first thing we can do is to actually change the scale. So now if I repeat the same. So it will quantize to the scale which is selected. In this case, C natural minor, which is great. By the way, you can also create your custom scale just clicking on the notes here. But this is where the magic happens. At the moment, if I press a key, it will just, you can see this symbol here, highlighting here in this step. This is the root, R for root. So, so I'm going up this scale of C minor. Now, you might be thinking, well, okay, so what's so special? Here on the top right side, you see repeat. So increase the repeat to, to one. In this case, you have an additional step here, which is highlighted. Okay, so if I press again one note, you hear only that root, okay, and only the first step. Now, let's change the step length here, which is off, and let's give it something in millisecond. And now let's press um, the C key on the controller. So you can see there is a short delay, which corresponds to this 21 millisecond between repetition of the notes, which in this case are the same C, because I pressed a C key on the MIDI controller. And let's increase the uh, length. So, and that is where it acts as a delay. Now you can step the length as synced to the host, so you press here, and now when you can, you can change these based on the sync to the host. So you can go, for example, to one eighth. And now if I go up my octave, which is really good. And if you really want to know what it is doing, just use something like grand stuff and insert it here. And let's take the um, output from Kaleidoscope as an input into grand stuff. Okay, and um, like so. And now we can see what is happening. Press the C key. So it is repeating. And you can see the quantization there as well. Okay, so let's go further. Now, if I press and release a key very quickly, it still plays these two notes, uh, it repeats one. If I enable the release and I let go straight away, it will stop the sound immediately. So if I want the steps being repeated, I need to hold the key. 
Okay, and that is useful. Okay, so underneath here, what you can see is velocity. You have a start velocity, as you can see, and you also have an incremental velocity. So you can set how much you will increment the velocity through the different steps. Now let's increase the repetition to four or perhaps seven, why not? So you can hear it's starting from this velocity 76 and is increasing up. Okay, so that's really good. By the way, you can also decrease it if you like it as well. Similarly, underneath here you have pitch. So you can go here to the right hand side and say increment the pitch by one semitone. Okay. Now it will be quantized to the scale which is selected. If you wanted to go up a step by the corresponding scale or not available, then click here. That's different. Let's hear it. Okay. So that's a, a, a key difference. But now, let's say that um, we have only, uh, well, let's say three repetition. Okay. Like so. Let's say that the pitch we wanted to go up by... Uh, 12 semitones. You can see, see here 0, 12, 24, 36. So let's press a key. So we'll go up by 12 semitones in this case um, an opti every time. Of course, if I set this to go up by incremental scale, I'll have to change this to 7 to obtain the same effect. Okay, so let's revert these back. Now, the reason I'm showing you this is because you can do very interesting things. So now you can say pitch reverse. So after one step, so it will go up. And then after one step, it will um, stop going up and will reverse down. That is why you have these ascending and descending effect. But if you say after two step, for example, you go up after two repetition, then it comes down and you start to have a repetition. So it goes up and down. And this is useful particularly if you enable loop here. So if you hold your note or key on the MIDI external controller. Great. And again, let's look at ground stuff. So as you can see, it's more than one delay, particularly as you have release on. So you can start to use it as an arpeggio, really, which is fantastic. Now, if you click on a step, you, you actually omit it. Now, you can have it to tie notes, so you hear the difference now when it gets to this repetition here. So it's holding the previous note. You can also say to skip the pitch M, okay, you can see here what it's doing. 0, 12, 12, 0. If I disable that, it's going up 24 instead of skipping the increment of the pitch. You can also tell it to skip the note. In this case, it will, you will not hear the step which is missed. Of course, you have a, a panic button here. If something goes wrong, you have a bypass button which is amazing here you have any preset which of course you can choose which are categorized by folder click and hold here you can go inside the preset manager click and hold here you can go into the color scheme click here you get different option of course as usual right you can change the key here you can snap it to the bit as well which is really useful when it comes to actually play along in a song. The other thing you can do is if you triple click, you can disable here uh, on the pitch. You can do the same on the velocity and then you can change manually the different steps. Oh, let's enable this. So, and of course, triple click again to re-enable it. So it's really great. And then what you can do, you can add another source. Let's say that we uh, go for ISIM, really nice ISIM. I always love it. 
Let's ensure we have a base. Yeah, um, lucky for us, this code base is already selected. We have another instance here of Kaleidoscope and we connect it to, um, to ISM here, like so. We take the MIDI output, okay, and then we get the input here on this instance of Kaleidoscope with my keyboard. So when I press a key, it will start this Kaleidoscope, which will drive piano tech, but also it will start this kaleidoscope instance here, the second one, which will drive the bass. And then what you can do, you can go inside here and have more fun, right? So we go sync here and we go to, um, again, one eighth, why not? And then we go to uh, free repetition and let's try. We put re loop on. We put the same scale here. Of course, you, you obtain interesting effects if you don't have release on because you duplicate when you change keys, right? Depending, you can overlap, right? So useful, for example, to have release on. And that's pretty, pretty amazing. So it's really, really a great um, MIDI effect. I hope you enjoyed this short tutorial and uh, introduction to this fantastic uh, MIDI delay effect, MIDI processor. I think it can do a lot. And as always, see you next time. Bye.